hey y'all what's up welcome back to the vlog so if you're new here i'm valerie and it's sunday we about to do a recap y'all this is the last recap for the shy this is season three episode 10 y'all this episode left me with uh, for sure feeling that there's going to be a season four. There were so many cliffhangers in this episode. And I'm just like, Lena, don't leave me like this. But then again, like, thank you for leaving me like this because now I'm so ready for season four. So yeah, y'all, let's get into it. Happy Sunday. <laughs> so the vlog begins with Ronnie's funeral, okay? Um... Ronnie's funeral, he had a he had a better funeral, it looked like. Well, we didn't even see Miss Ethel, his grandma's funeral. We didn't see Miss Ethel's funeral, but Ronnie had a nice little funeral, you know. He had a beautiful um whoever there was singing. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure she's some well known person because she sung beautifully. Y'all, I was I was there for her um little her solo that she sang at Ronnie's um funeral. And did y'all see those two guys, Ronnie's two friends? Them two dudes are gay. Like, why do they keep on popping up in the episodes? Whatever episodes they in, they are always together, y'all. Y'all cannot tell me them two dudes, those two dudes are not gay. Everybody was gay. Like, there was so many references about being gay or transgender and things like that. And let me just say this, y'all. Um, Hellman Grad Productions reached out to me and they sent me some fan art. When they did that, uh, because I've been doing recaps, y'all. So, I, if y'all follow me on Instagram, y'all seen in my story where I posted the fan art that they sent me. I'm going to do a what to expect from season four next Sunday. And I'll show you all the fan art here on YouTube. But yeah, y'all, somebody's been watching. So, they, Hillman Grad Productions sent me some fan art. And I went and investigated Hillman. Well, I went and checked out Hillman Grad Productions because I didn't even realize that they were on the credits at the end of each episode until after they reached out to me and said, hey, we want to send you something. So after I did that, I, I started looking more into Lena Waithe. And she said, this is, these are the words that Lena Waithe has said because I felt like she was pushing the gay agenda. But what it is is she is given a platform platform to marginalize audiences people who um aren't always necessarily um given a platform in order to display their talent in order to tell their stories which i understood so you know what i'm saying y'all at the end of the episode when wale they had wale um uh sue me i'm rooting for everybody that's black i was like yes y'all i live for the soundtrack this season but back to ronnie's funeral um Lena did also say, if you guys watch her recaps of the show on Sunday after the show airs, she does a recap on Instagram. She said that she got, because a lot of people are confused on why she lifted him up so much. And then, you know, her and the writers lifted him up so much and then um, all to just do away with his character, which I wonder too. And she was saying that she doesn't want any of her characters to outstay their welcome. Ronnie had did what he came to do. And that was the end of his his time here on the show he sh and i was like oh okay you know i i y'all gotta go watch the recap because i can't recap her recap right now i'm busy <laughs> yeah i'm just <laughs> i'm playing but not really y'all go watch her recap it's on instagram but um yeah those two dudes were there and then um did y'all notice baby girl's hair was done because last sunday i said why um ronnie's granddaughter's hair wasn't done and <laughs> Come to find out that's Ronnie's real daughter in real life. But her hair was done this Sunday, y'all. Y'all do not get it twisted. It was no shade. I was just wondering why they ain't comb her hair. That was all. So I, I just want to clear that up because it's, it's no shade. I just said what I said. But um, anyway, Keisha confirms that she is pregnant to Emmett in the next scene. And Emmett, he says some insensitive things. I was like, Emmett, like, Emmett can't win from losing. Emmett always doing something silly, y'all. So... Yeah, Emmett says some insensitive things to her. And then Jake mentions how, basically how we all felt about it. He was like, you know, Ronnie, he was like, I don't know why y'all feeling some type of way about him because he did kill Coogie. And then you got Papa chim chiming in and Papa says, a sinner is just a saint who fell down. And what I want to say about that is, if you also watch Lena's recap, she says that she wants to, her and the writers wanted to show, her and the Hill McGrath production writers wanted to show the characters 
all dynamics of the characters, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because that is the stuff that is made of all of us. We all have the good, the bad, the ugly. We all are in, you know, we have our hills and our valleys. And right now, um, in <laughs> Ronnie had was in the valley at, at, before he found Keisha. And then he was in the hills. And Lena also, ex when he found her, and Lena also explained that she wanted to emphasize that um, before Ronnie died, she wanted him to, before his character w was killed, she wanted him to do a lot of good things to make right with God and things like that. Y'all gotta watch the recap. I'm not about to, because I'll be on here all day. But, um... Uh, what else? So, Papa's dad gets arrested in front of him. Stanley gets arrested in front of him, uh, Papa and Jake and everybody at the funeral, basically. Papa's dad gets arrested. And didn't I tell y'all? Y'all, didn't I tell y'all? I was like, he probably getting arrested for some money laundering or something. If y'all didn't know, last last week's um, recap, I really didn't take my time. I was really... I Y'all, I be doing something on Sundays. So, I do a lot... <laughs> anyway... I hurried up and rushed that recap and posted it, but I just said what was off the dome. I didn't write anything down, but I did say Papa's dad probably is um, doing some money laundering or something like that. That's probably, um, I was like, you know how those, um, no, I said Duda probably got in trouble for some money. I was like, those paperwork that Duda um, had in that safe, it was probably some paper about money laundering. So I knew something, I don't know, I, I, I knew something was going to happen about some money laundering or something, but Papa's dad ended up getting arrested for money laundering. And then Jake's come to find out Gemma's dad is like, y'all, we're going to get to that part. So, yeah, and, um, but this whole season, back to Stanley and Papa, this whole season has been a trial for their relationship. And I, Lena, if you're watching or Hill McGrath Productions, I'm ready to meet Papa's mama. Like, Papa's dad, you know, I really appreciated the way that he handled the situation when Papa kind of got out of line and then he corrected him. He didn't correct him like, you know, I'm the adult and I know better. He told him that we, he's doing the best that he can do and he's just human too. And if y'all look, if y'all been following me and listen to my other recap, I know sometimes they long, but I be getting into it. I say what I say. Um, Pop, I said that sometimes us parents be doing things that our kids just don't understand and I really appreciated that Papa's character, his his dad, Stanley. Um, I I like the approach that was taken there. It was it it was like similar, very similar to my parenting approach versus just beating down on your child, talking down on your child. Um, so yeah, and then uh, so Papa's dad is a snitch. Papa's dad is in the in the county jail snitching on everybody. I was like, why are you gonna do this dirt? And no, you can't handle the heat. So he out of jail. At the end of the episode, he was out of jail. So next season, we're going to have to see. We're going to talk about next season next week. But let's go on to Tiff and Emmett's storyline, y'all. I really am still so confused. I'm glad that they did clear up that um, Tiff did get an abortion last. Uh, that's what happened to the baby because I knew she was pregnant. Y'all, am I doing that much talking? I just really just spit. Anyway, I um, y'all got to excuse that. I'm still cute. But anyway, um, yeah, they said that Tiff was uh, pregnant and then she got an abortion. So she was talking to Keisha. Keisha is, in fact, pregnant by her abductor. She was talking to Keisha about it. Y'all, when Kevin said, I know you ain't about to keep that that nasty man's baby, I felt that. I was like, girl, get rid of it. I don't know why you sitting here. I know y'all trying to come up with a storyline, but y'all sitting here dragging out her story. is getting on my nerve at this point. I'm not even going to cap. Like, I, I got to keep it all the way real with y'all. Sweetie, get an abortion and keep it moving. But um, if, <laughs> we'll talk about that next week, what we think she's going to do. Everybody in the group chats are saying she's going to keep the baby. So if y'all, I don't know. We'll see who is right. But um, when Tiff says that, when, she, when, they, when Tiff and Emmett were at the, uh, the relationship counseling or whatever they are in, that was the judge mandated them to do. And the counselor said, um, are y'all ready to get married? And this is what you want to do? Tiff was like... I've been putting up with this shit for years and uh, he should have been proposed. And I was like, I don't think so. I was like, you should have been ran for the hills, honey. That's not how it worked because you've been putting up with his stuff all this time. 
he, you supposed to get married to him like you sound foolish so i already know that their marriage is not gonna work out that plus emmett and his mama jada is so trifling y'all they didn't made jada's character i don't know if i didn't lost a little bit of respect for her character or what like she kind of trying to tell tiff that her son ain't shit but then again she's like helping her celebrate she's smoking weed i was like whoa you smoking weed with her tiff's sitting up cussing with her like they you know it's not a mother-daughter relationship it's like a a friend we girlfriends type of relationship i was like well i guess y'all are because as much as emmett been taking tiff down on that daggone couch honey y'all you need to tell y'all your little friends or your your sons and your, your kids to get you a new sofa because i'm over it but yeah tiff is in denial she's then got proposed to and she's basically in denial she she the one smoking too much weed remember when she said emmett been smoking too much weed it's really tiff but in the next scene papa says y'all <laughs> when papa uh goes and chills with jake and um and Kev and Jake and Kev was like, we gonna pray for you, Papa, because your father got locked up. And Papa said, y'all ain't about to pray for me because y'all don't even know how to pray. Y'all don't know I felt that. I was like, I know that's right. I be telling that. I don't, that's why I don't even discuss some of my problems with people because I don't even need you to pray for me because I don't even know who you praying to, what you praying for, and or, and, and what have you. I don't know your standards with, with, the, with God and you and your god so i uh, i felt that but um y'all was i was dying laughing and then papa was like i gotta take care of maisha and my mama i was like i want to meet his mama sometime soon like she's but y'all Jim's dad is crooked which i already knew y'all y'all gotta understand behind every great fortune is a crime i don't even know who's saying that is but it's a saying behind every great fortune is a crime okay so if y'all see me out here scamming, I'm just playing. <laughs> let me quit playing, y'all, because you, people be saying, you know how, let me quit playing. Okay, let's run that back. So, um, you know what they say, behind every great fortune is a crime. So, uh, it's just crazy. I kind of figured um, Jimma's papa had something going on because he had, he seems to have a massive amount of wealth he cut his family has owned a bank before so you know it is it's there's a backstory to that and i'm interested to know more about it i'm interested to more know more about their characters i think we're gonna know more about their characters because at the end when jimma's dad came over to um duda and said hey uh stanley is over there uh running his mouth like a like a like a bird or whatever he said you know he's he's over there spilling all the tea to get out of jail i was like oh and then dude i wouldn't you know we don't get to do that part but i was like oh okay i see i see what's going on now i see why y'all didn't vote for camille and that was a surprising ending too to find out that camille wasn't who i kind of thought i I kind of thought she was a little crooked, but to come to find out, we're going to get to that part. So, Keisha, we already talked Keisha. We said Keisha talked to Tiff about that abortion. We're going to skip that part. So, I love, love, love how Papa's dad addressed that situation. I went over that already. Um, Camille says that she isn't the pawn in this. That's why she never used that information that was given to her by rose i knew rose y'all y'all gotta go if y'all y'all gotta sound off in the comments if y'all know that i was correct when i said how many of y'all think rose probably knew what was in that safe already she probably put whatever it was in the safe in there because she knew the combination and she just gave it to jay so she already knew and i can't believe i said this is why i do that doesn't trust you because why are you this emotional because he told you know he's talking to you sideways you know she feels disrespected so she's just being just not right i was like this is the utmost portrayal this man you just as worse as his mama what was the point of you giving his mama that money to hush up and not um betray dude i when you gonna try to do what his mama did like girl you belong candy 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 i was watching i said oh candy i know oh this is why he can't trust you but um yeah y'all <laughs> and camille said uh so candy goes into uh, or rose we gonna call her rose because that ain't candy that's rose rose goes to um <laughs> she in character right now rose goes over to camille and says why you ain't use that paperwork that i gave you and even reg is at home wondering because you know he had to go to court to see who got custody of, of uh of jake and he ends up getting custody because this we gonna get to that but 
when she goes over there, Camille says, I'm not about to be your little pawn. I'm going to win fair and square. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, so when Duda's mom said that Camille didn't pay her for that information, she did it fair and she did it for free. Maybe Camille didn't even accept that um, information that Duda's mom came with. And Duda's mom ended up going to the the news and wanting to just say something. Because, you know, the news, it'd be so weird how the news always find the raggediest black person. I was like, that makes sense. Maybe that's what happened. They always fire. Remember that one lady that was talking about that house was on fire? She was like, oh, good Lord, it's a fire. I was like, they couldn't find nobody else. They Just you. So, yeah, that was, that was what was going on with that situation. But, yeah, Camille said, I ain't going to be nobody's pawn. But I was thinking, like, you know, pawns are the soul of the game now. Don't get it twisted, Camille. I was like, the ball is in your court. If you want to go ahead on to be a pawn, the ball is in your court. But she said she ain't going to be her pawn. And I definitely understood that because uh, what happened with Trig and uh, Imani and Jake, those were all pawns in Duda's game. Yes, yeah, so now Trig, Trig is now working for Duda. But when Trig shook Duda's hand, it was more like, I'm going to agree with you now. It was more like, let me hug the enemy to see how big to dig the hole type of situation, you know. So we're going to see next season. I feel like that's something we're going to get into next season. Um, and Jada, I said Jada fake as hell. Darnell in that Bluetooth, y'all. Why was he still, he, kept, he took off everything but his socks in that Bluetooth <laughs> when he took Emmett. I already sent Lena a DM and tagged her and said, please, please upgrade him to some AirPods next season. I'm not playing. But y'all, the dyke stripper had me dead. Stud, is it stud the better word, y'all? I don't want to be offensive. I, I, I just be talking, but I don't mean no harm. But I was like, when Jada said, I at the, at, at, Tiff's, y'all, y'all seen the episode, y'all know what I'm talking about, at Tiff's um, bachelorette party, and Jada was like, you said you don't like male strippers, I started dying laughing, because I one time did a recap and was like, I said something about not liking male strippers when Miss Ethel went to that club on Miss Ethel's last episode, I was like, I like female strippers, and then it was a female stripper there, I was like, but I don't like this type of female stripper, I want a soft big booty <laughs> that's wiggling, I don't, I don't, no, like I want a nice, I want to look at something. If that might as well have been a male stripper. But the ambiance was cool. Like she was dancing. The male stripper was, the female stripper was dancing. It was very a masculine type of dance. If you ever got, y'all, I had this crazy time in New Orleans one time. I, I went to this male strip club. It, okay, so that's another story for another time. But, because I think we almost into 20 minutes. So I'm going to wrap this up. But, um, yeah, um that's about it and um when jake told so when jake told imani that he didn't care that she was transgender i was like oh here we go with this again but y'all lastly what i want to say to wrap this up is Gemma, when she opened up to kev and told kev that he can open up to her and she said that she had gotten therapy i said okay lena you're also bringing this into our community and open this up Lena and the writers, Hill McGrath Production, y'all writers are also bringing forth that it's okay to get therapy. And I really appreciate that. That is something to not be ashamed of. Gemma got therapy this season. Jake did, um, or last season, Jake did. He may have this season. They may have went as a family after Keisha was found. Keisha, uh, her parents did. And, you know, it's a lot of people. Uh, then you you also got Tiff and Emmett that's in therapy. It's a lot of people, black people, that are um, coming together to better themselves by seeking help, mental help, help, mental health, health, help, seeking help with their mental health. How about that? Oh, <laughs> so yeah, y'all. Um, and then Kevin goes on and has sex with Gemma. I was like, ooh, we. All right, y'all. How did y'all feel about that? Because I know in the group chat, y'all be like, oh my God. So these kids are just cussing now. Now y'all about to be like, oh my God, so these kids are just having sex now? Listen, y'all, I had my first child when I was very young. Kids are having sex. Put them on birth control, period, okay? I hope Jim is on birth control. Because she said she talked to her therapist about Kevin being her first. I was like, and her therapist said, just make sure you're sure. I was like, did the therapist also recommend that you get some birth control? Because maybe the therapist wasn't able to talk to your dad about you doing this because of some laws and regulations or whatever. But sweetie, Kevin said he came so fast, it wasn't even funny. So, hmm, 
Don't be making uh, Dre and uh, Nina a grandmama at the same time, y'all. At the same time as Keisha. Come on now. But yeah, y'all. Uh, <laughs> this vlog is getting long. Um, y'all, thank you so much for being with me here for this season. I really enjoyed it. I really appreciate all of you who watch my recaps, who bear with me, because y'all know I forget names. Um, all that good stuff, y'all. It's been real... It, it's been a it's been a good ride, y'all. I, I literally cannot wait until season four. I'm so excited. We're gonna get into talking about our predictions for season four um, next week when I show y'all what was sent to me, my fan art, or, or you can just follow me on Instagram, y'all. I don't mind. Uh, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to start doing recaps of Power Book Two uh, in September, so y'all stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, y'all, it's been real. Y'all be easy. Peace.